Let's get you back to the Mo Betta's courtside seats and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. In overtime, Boise State 72 and BYU 68. The Broncos win the overtime session 14 to 10. BYU on the night shoots under 40% from the field, under 30% from the arc. And that will normally do you in on the road, and it did tonight. 71% from the free throw line. BYU out-rebounds an opponent for the first time this year, but rebounding is not the most important stat on this night. Hasn't been in BYU's first four games, and it wasn't tonight either. 44-42 on the glass. BYU the advantage there. BYU not an efficient night. Seven assists and ten turnovers. Seven assists on 25 makes. That's not really the way it's drawn up for BYU. Boise State 15 assists, 11 turnovers. BYU led tonight. I beg your pardon. Back it up. BYU does have 15 assists on uh, and 11 turnovers, 15 assists on 28 makes. Their assist rate a little better that night for, uh, for BYU than for Boise State, about 50%, but again, lower than maybe preferred in that number. BYU led by Jake Toulson's 19 points, 10 points for TJ Haas, 10 for Connor Harding, but 10 after, after those back-to-back threes, Connor did not score again the rest of the night. Uh, nine for Zach Selyus, seven for Colby Lee, six for Dalton Nixon, four for Alex Barcelo, three for Trevin Nell. T.J. Haas tonight uh, does uh, not hit, uh, does hit double figures on 10 points, but on 5 for 16 shooting, and the BYU guards really all struggled to shoot. The Cougs guards end up shooting 14 for 42 on this night. Barcelo, 2 for 6. Toulson, 7 for 20. And uh, Haas, 5 for 16. Barcelo and Haas combined to go 0 for 10 from deep tonight. Dalton Nixon was 0 for 1, his first game without a 3 this year. BYU is a team, shoots 7 for 24 from the 3-point line. So even though Boise couldn't hit a 3 tonight, 3 of 19, the Broncos hang on for a win. And T.J. Haas did not get to the free throw line one time tonight, the big part of his game. The free throw disparity is the ball game. 27 free throw takes for Boise State to 7 for BYU. A difference of 20 free throw attempts, a difference of 14 makes, and that's where this game is won for the Broncos in overtime by a score of 70 to 68. Time now for a look at our New Skin Data Discovery, brought to you by New Skin. Discover the best you. When you look at the box score, Terry Nash, what do you discover in tonight's numbers? I think you mentioned it. I don't know the last time TJ played a game that he didn't shoot a free throw, um, but that was the difference in the game. Boise State went right at the rim and attacked it, and uh, BYU was unable to get to the foul line. Just a better second half as far as energy. We're right in the game, just unable to uh, make plays at the end. Boise State led by... Uh, 26 points from Derek Alston. R.J. Williams, 18 before fouling out. Seven for Max Rice. A nine for Justinian Jessup. And he makes one three tonight, and that was massive. He has a three for 13 shooting night, does Jessup. And the one three he makes is the one that basically wins the ball game for Boise State in overtime. Seven points for Rice. Uh, a six for Hobbs. Four for George. Two for Dickinson. Gets you to 72 to BYU's 68. Miscellaneous categories, points off a of turnover is Boise plus 5, 13 to 8. Points in the paint, Boise plus 10, 30, 44 to 34. Second chance to Boise plus 2. Fast break to Boise plus 2. The bench to BYU plus 11 at 22 to 11. BYU's large lead tonight was only 3. The Cougars could never push it. Boise's large lead was 9, and they win it by 4 in overtime, 72-68. Coming up next, Cougar Post Game Live with Jason Shepard, then more from Boise following Jason's reports. We'll come back to Extra Mile Arena with player and coach conversations. Final score, Boise State 72, BYU 68. Cougar Post Game Live next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The final horn has sounded. And today's game is complete. Get to Yo. Yo drives to the oh. rim. Oh! Throws it down. Time now for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's your host, Jason Shepard. BYU falls at Boise State tonight in overtime, 72-68. Cougars record now 3-2 and two through five games. We'll get you back up to Extra Mile Arena coming up in just a few minutes. Let's get to the scoreboard on the evening. Top 25 action. Handful of games on the schedule. Everything is a final at this time of night. Number two, Louisville defeating South Carolina Upstate, 76-50. to Number five, North Carolina took care of business at home over Elon, 75-61. 16th ranked Memphis, 10 better than Little Rock at 68 to 58. And 20th ranked Tennessee, the Vols getting the win by, let's see, do the math, live on air, always dangerous. That would be that would be 35 points over Alabama State. Big win for the Vols, 20th ranked in the country. Other games featuring West Coast Conference teams. 
Still going on right now, 16 and a half minutes to go in the second half in San Diego, San Diego State with a 12-point lead at San Diego, 41-29 in favor of the Aztecs over the Toreros. 15 minutes to go in the second half in Sacramento, St. Mary's taking on Fresno State. The Gales with an 11-point lead at 44-33 and a final Portland looked to be in trouble at Portland State, but the Pilots pull away late and they get the win, 82 to 75. They are 4 and 1 overall to begin their season through 5 games. Coming up on the other side, we'll look in on the night on the NBA, Jazz getting a big win on the road. Let you know where and by how much. Pretty interesting game. All the NBA scores coming up on the other side, the Cougars, though, get the loss at Boise State, 72-68 in overtime. More Cougar postgame live coming your way next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar postgame live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 72-68, Boise State defeating BYU tonight in overtime. The Cougars now 3-2 on the season. It's time for the Mountain America three-point recap for each three-pointer BYU makes. Mountain America donates $50 to the American Red Cross. Tonight, the Cougars made seven three-pointers for a total of $350, bringing the total donations for the season to $2,000. One hundred dollars in the NBA tonight. The Utah Jazz getting a big road win two nights after losing to the Timberwolves in Salt Lake City. The Jazz go on the road and beat Minnesota 103-95 between thir- behind 30 points, four rebounds and three assists from Bojan Bogdanovic. One game still going on, and it's a good one. The Doc Rivers Bowl in Los Angeles at Staples Center. to go in the fourth quarter. The Boston Celtics with a four-point lead over the Clippers, 90-86. Paul George with 20 points, four rebounds, and five assists. Everything else is a final. The Wizards defeat the Spurs, 138-132. 76ers get the win over the New York Knicks, 109-104. We the North, the Toronto Raptors defeating the Orlando Magic in Toronto, 113-97. Bucks get the road win in Atlanta, 135-127. Miami defeats Cleveland, 124-100. Brooklyn, 10 better than the Charlotte Hornets at 101-91. The Dallas Mavericks beat the Golden State Warriors, 142-94. The Warriors now 3-13. and Man, that is a weird Weird number to see associated with the Golden State Warriors in the last couple of years. The Bulls get the win over the Pistons, 109-89. to And at the Pepsi Center in Denver, the Denver Nuggets defeat the Houston Rockets, 105-95. to That is a wrap for Cougar Post Game Live. After the break, back up to Extra Mile Arena in Boise, Idaho, for the Cougar Locker Room Show. Your final tonight, BYU falls to Boise State in overtime. Your final score, 72-68, Broncos over the Cougars. And you heard it all right here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Our exclusive postgame coverage continues with the Cougar Locker Room Show. A strip and the Cougars get it back. Sellius for the dunk. Zach Sellius throws it down. The Cougar Locker Room Show was brought to you by Utah Community Credit Union. Get more house. Same payment at UCCU. It's what we do. Now let's head back to the Mo Betta's courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. We're back courtside, Extra Mile Arena in Boise, Idaho. Broncos win it in overtime tonight, 72-68 to over BYU. Cooks fall to 3-2. and two. The Broncos go to 2-2. Two and two. Time now for the Sport Court courtside interview. And our guest courtside is Alex Barcelo. Alex had a career-high seven rebounds tonight to go, go along with four points, three assists, and a steal as BYU falls in OT. Alex, a tough night for you and the boys. Uh, just initial thoughts having us sat on this one for a few minutes. Um, you know, we made a, a great run there. Um and uh, we just got to keep working and getting better. Um, there, there are things that we definitely uh, didn't execute as well, but uh, we're going to get back to get back to Provo and, and practice and uh, just keep keep trying to get better. It seemed like the game might have been there for you to grab a pretty gross, strong grip on in the early moments of the game uh, when things weren't dropping for you. Do you see it the same way? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, um, just like 
I feel like uh, in the first half, a lot of the shots that usually fall for every guy on the team, um, they weren't falling, so we had to figure out other ways uh, to keep in the game, um, you know, being aggressive defensively and then put, uh, locking up in transition. Um, but then shots shots fell in the second half. We made a little run, and then, you know, things just didn't play out our way. Looked like the pace in the second half was different, uh, even the emotion on the bench where everybody was moving at a faster pace defensively. What was the, the tone at halftime? Definitely. Um, I mean, we – we came out, uh, I feel like, a little bit lackadaisical. Uh, you know, we didn't come out with the energy that we usually come out with. To begin um, the game? Yeah, to begin the game. You know, we were kind of a little bit slow, um, and uh, that's kind of what we talked about at halftime. You know, just pick it up, stay true to what we do, and uh, bring that energy for the first few minutes and then carry that on for the rest of the second half. Nice strong run, as you noted, early in the second half, and Connor Harding was a big part of it. A couple couple threes that pulled you right back in it. Definitely. Um, I mean, Connor is a great, great player. Um, and, I mean, those are shots that we want him to shoot, and, and he can make those. So he had, he had some big-time plays, and he was a very key, key player in this game. Visiting with Alex Barcelo in our Sport Court courtside interview. A brief break, and we'll come back. Some closing comments from Alex next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Locker Room Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Alex Barcelo among BYU players who played 40-plus tonight. And this game did go 40-plus, an extra five. And in overtime, Boise wins it by a score of 72-68. to 68. AB with us. And Alex, wow, you've had, uh, you've had great bounces, bad breaks, ups and downs. A lot's happened here in the first five games. How do you kind of look back on this first little phase of the season that sends you off to Maui at this point? Um, you know, we definitely, I mean, had two losses that we felt like we should have won, um, but those are things that we can learn from and get better from, um, and we're going to take both of those losses and, and just try to go back uh, tomorrow and, and get this practice in and just keep moving forward. Um, and definitely the wins that we had, I mean, we look at those as a positive thing, obviously, and uh, guys played really well, um, even in the, loss, the losses that we've had, and just going to continue moving in the right direction and, and playing hard. Uh, obviously, off to the, the Maui Invitational learn from it, move on from it. How much uh, do you know about it? How uh, much of a student of that tournament are you? Um, I mean, I went there last year with Arizona, so it's a great tournament. I mean, a lot of great teams go to it, so so we're going to come there and give it our best shot, and then we're going to come there ready to p- compete and, and win games. Not everyone gets back-to-back trips to Maui, so I guess you're one of the fortunate few in college basketball. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, Alex, there'll be a better night, certainly, uh, for, for the team moving forward, and, uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, out in Hawaii. Sounds good. Thank Thanks, you. Alex. That's Alex Barcelo. Coach Mark Pope is coming up next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the final word on today's game with head coach Mark Pope. It's the BYU Dining Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU Dining, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. The Cougar Post Game Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, Mountain America Visa credit cards featuring triple rewards. Now let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so we are back courtside at Extra Mile Arena, Boise, Idaho. Time for the BYU Dining Cougar Post Game Coaches Show with Coach Mark Pope. Brought to you by BYU Dining and the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Boise is a winner in overtime, 72-68. to 68. The Cougs fall to 3-2 and two and on their way to the Maui Invitational. BYU head coach Mark Pope now putting on the headset and joining us courts, uh, courtside. Coach Pope, uh, maybe just a, a thought or two uh, about the game before we dive into a few particulars. Well, just just super disappointing. Like an unbelievably poor job on my part. Um, and we're, you know, we know that we're going to grow on starts and fits and, um we, we, we stuck some, some parts of this game with some really strange lineups out there and trying to stay alive. And, you know, I preach to these guys about trusting each other and trusting uh, our actions. And then I'm the one actually who's who's not uh, giving them the right trust in the right ways. And, and um, you know, we're, 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 we, we've spent a lot of this game just trying to – we're just in a desperate search for answers and uh, you know, I, I was I was incredibly proud of our guys' fight, um, which is which is the number one constant we have to have. And then we just you know we just we just didn't come up with the right answers at the right time. 
is that trust part of what um, lets you run that thing to the end and say go make a play, not call a timeout and set something up there at the end? Yeah, and interestingly, you know, clearly that was that was the wrong call. It didn't work. Um, and you know, there's there's situations where these guys need me to help them more, and um, that's 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 part of. Um, us learning each other better and kind of learning our roster and learning how we play and learning what we can do and certainly in that situation uh, you know it was probably a clear case of, of me leaving those guys out to hang a little bit and we should have we just should have stopped stopped the possession and come over and talked about it and organized it and and um, and given these guys a, a platform to work off uh, that was that was a little bit more engaging than than just um, what we got. Coach, you talk about a couple answers. Uh, I felt like there was a few things in that second half. One, the difference in the second half and uh, what you're getting out of your role, and then also that matchup zone. I felt like it was answering and doing some things for you in that second half. Yeah, it's hard. You know, um, you know, I'm a ball screen and roll coach. That's what we do, and we just couldn't get a roll. We couldn't get anybody to roll in the first half, partly because Kobe had to play so many minutes in the first half. Um and so he was exhausted, but it's uh, you know it renders that that action pretty functionless if if you don't have that, and we just couldn't you know, we just couldn't get that done. Uh, we weren't great in the second half. We had a little more flavor. Um, you know, we were stuck uh, in the first half. Clearly, we were totally stuck in molasses. In the second half, we got a little bit of pace in transition. Uh, you know, when we when 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 I trusted our actions a little bit longer. Uh, in a possession, um, you know, it proved to serve us well. And, and when I didn't trust it long enough, it. it and so um, that's that's a process of, of growing as a team and it's something that we need to work on. And I know it sounds like it's f these floating around terms, but it's very real. How much did you feel the game was there for you in the early moments of the game? Well, I think we came in feeling good. I think my guys were focused. I think they wanted to play. They wanted to play hard. They, they, these guys really want to compete. Uh, they want. They got a ton of fight in them. They're willing to endure a lot of frustration to get to their moments in the game, which is a really special quality in a group of guys. Um, and so I didn't feel bad about that. I just felt like, uh, you know, um, keep throwing this around because I think it is the key of this of of the game of basketball is this idea of trust, trusting the right things at the right times and. And, uh, you know, trusting the right situations. And, and we got exposed in the first half with our trust, and we, we certainly got exposed in the last few minutes of the game with our trust. Okay, Coach Mark Pope is with us. We'll take a break, and the more from Mark is next. BYU falls in overtime, 72-68 to Boise State. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Postgame Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now, back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU Dining Cougar Postgame Coaches Show continues. Brought to you by BYU Dining and the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Greg Rubel, Terry Nashif, your courtside tandem, visiting with BYU's head coach, Mark Pope, as the Cougs. Uh, loose tough one tonight in overtime, a 72-68 uh, to Boise State. Broncos go to 2-2. Two and two. BYU falls to 3-2. and two. And so we've hit that point, Coach Pope, where the uh, the mainland games are done here. Your first five games are, are in the books, and you now hit uh, hit Maui for three games in three days starting next Monday. How well-suited do you believe this team is right now to go through the grind of those uh, those three games in, very, in a very short span of time? Well, this is what we prepare for, right? And so... Um you know, we, we'll we'll learn a lot from this game. We'll learn a lot, and um, and we'll keep growing. You know, we've known since the beginning of the season that our deal was, we, we, you know, we have to find a way to grow every single day, and and certainly this offers us a lot of opportunity to, to find ourselves and, and grow in some ways, and we need to do that. Um, this this Maui trip is going to be really really exciting, and it's going to be really challenging, and it's everything you ask for as a player and a coach, and so we're excited to roll out there and take a big swing. Uh, talk a little bit, Coach, uh, about Dalton Nixon only being able to play 16 minutes in a 45-minute game and what that does to your rotation. Well, you know, Dalton is such a huge part of what we do. Um, we're, we, you know, right now I am not allowing us to have probably the depth that we need 
I need to get a little deeper. And, and, and Dalton is so tough, and he's such a winner, and he brings so much energy to the floor. And he's, 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 he's become such a versatile player um, that can do work on the glass, and he can do work on the rolling, do work on the pop. And he's, he's, uh, you know, he's been great for us defensively in terms of being really, really solid. It actually hurt us a lot. Um, you know, clearly we, we just had no answer for Alston all night long. And and uh, Dalt not being on the floor probably allowed him to get going. We made some poor decisions. Actually, when we did get in front of him, we made some poor decisions, bailing him out with fouls. And, and on the flip side, we just couldn't manage to draw a foul. You know, we got doubled up on fouls. And we have to do a better job. Um, we got to do a better job earning ourselves trips to the free throw line. And, and um, you know, so Dalt does all those things. He's a really important part of this team, and we got to find a way to keep him on the floor more. You know, he needs to play more for us in 16 minutes. And and when he doesn't, you know, when, when he when he has a, a, a you know a, a tough whistle night, uh, we got to we got to have guys that we can go to. You know, that'll step up for us and and make plays. And I got to trust guys. I got to go a little deeper in this bench and trust some more guys. BYU out rebounded an opponent for the first time this year. BYU made three more shots from the field, four more threes than Boise State. Ultimately, free throws at the ball game when it looks when you come down to it, nineteen for twenty-seven as opposed to five for seven. Yeah, and that's not supposed to be us. You know, um, that's not supposed to be who we are. We're supposed to be an aggressive, attacking, assertive uh, team. And, and for us to come out of the game with seven free throws, we're not doing our job. And and I'd like to sit here and complain about you know that, that it's it's not us but it is us like we, we need to earn trips to the charity strike that's what we do and and um, and so clearly it just is it you know when when you get stuck when the ball gets sticky when you lose movement when you lose lose flow when you lose an attacking nature you end up not getting the free throw line it's just one of many consequences you know as well as you know shooting seven for twenty four from the three point line when the ball gets sticky those shots the the karma of the game just tells you that's where you go and so it's it's a way we're going to grow we're going to get better I mean we were certainly better in the second half but we still don't believe we still don't trust it's still not our identity and my failure as a coach is nowhere close to our DNA. A yet and it need you know we need to make some real progress on believing in this become a part of who we are if we're going to become the team that i think we have a chance to become by the end of this season well the journey continues and it continues uh, in maui next week we'll be with you there for three games in three days starting monday night against ucla coach pope before you let uh, we let you go i did uh, meet your parents earlier this morning at, at shoot around and you're known as a Washington State guy, and your family lived there for a long, long time. But your folks have relocated after retirement to this neck of the woods, right? So this is kind of a home game for them. They got to see you and your team play. It was great to meet them and what wonderful people they are. And they got to see you uh, coach your new team here tonight. Yeah, you know, they're not, they're not going to be happy with me tonight. They probably won't speak to me tonight. So <laughs> it's just the nature of the deal. Uh, it was really fun to have them here. And it's, it's one of the special things about uh, being able to be a part of this sport is you get to – you know, you get to compete in front of people you love. And, and um, so it was really special having in the gym. Well, it was neat to meet them, and we'll see more of them and you. Coach, thanks for the time. We'll, uh, we'll see you uh, in Maui. Thanks, guys. All right, that's Coach Mark Pope. Back to wrap it up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Postgame Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now, back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. In front of 6,143 here at Extra Mile Arena in Boise, Idaho, the Boise State Broncos improved to 4-2 and two in Boise against BYU. The all-time series goes to the Cougars 9-5. to five. That Boise has won uh, three in a row, and I think maybe four of the last five against BYU tonight's final score 72 68 in overtime it was a 27 to 20 the Broncos led after one half BYU much better second half 38 31 BYU took the second half we went to overtime tied at 58 and that's where the Broncos outscored the Cougs 14 to 10 in the extra session uh, coach Terry uh, coach Terry Nashif coach Terry Nashif uh, thoughts on what uh, coach Mark Pope had to say during our postgame interview I thought it was um, really interesting to hear what he was talking about trusting guys and the, the DNA of the team and um, I think he's right on track obviously he knows his guys and um, super honest truthful open and uh, like what he was talking about where you've got to learn every single day and then trusting each other more and more and uh, especially on the road and I like what he's talking about with uh, going deeper on the bench, and hopefully the guys will trust him and respond um, when they get that opportunity. Well, our next game together, T, will be in late December, uh, Weber State at home, 
And um, after that game, I will uh, head off to Hawaii again for a bowl game. BYU will play a bowl game a couple of days later after that, but we'll call some basketball before that happens. And I'll call some basketball with Mark Durant next week in Hawaii, the island of Maui, as the Maui Invitational tips off Monday night uh, against uh, UCLA. Uh, it'll be a late game for our Mountain Time Zone listeners, uh, early evening there in the islands, and we'll see what happens with BYU's schedule after that first game against uh, UCLA. And that'll be a, a 6 30. Hawaii time uh, tip, so 9.30 in the Mountain Time Zone with an 8.30 pregame. Monday night, BYU and UCLA. The Bronco, uh, the Bruins off to a great start, 4-0 uh, to begin the year. They play one more game before they uh, play uh, at B- uh, play BYU. It's uh, tomorrow. It might even be Northridge. I'm not sure who they play tomorrow night, but they'll have one more game before they head to Maui. But BYU and UCLA Monday night is our next game. All right, that's going to do it for tonight. Our thanks to the crew back at BYU Radio in Provo, our control board operator, Tanner Rawl, our coordinating producer, uh, Terry South, who is also an engineer for us tonight, engineering assistance as well coming in from Sean Fay, intern Max Clark, our broadcast intern this evening, and our studio host, of course, Jason Shepard. Courtside, we had Basketball Media Relations Director Kyle Chilton serving as our statistician. And for my broadcast partner, Terry Nasha, my name is Greg Rubel saying, in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Good night and so long from Boise, Idaho. Buying a home can be a stressful process, but it doesn't have to be. And I should know, I'm a UCCU home buying expert. Think of me as your personal home buying advocate, a mortgage loan professional dedicated to your home buying experience from start to finish. And with UCCU's low rates, you may qualify for more house for the same payment that you could with other local lenders. So if you're thinking about buying or refinancing a home, talk to UCCU. It's what we do. Equal housing lender. NMLS 407653. Federally insured by NCUA. You've been listening to live coverage of BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Basketball is brought to you by Deseret First Credit Union. You know why? We show how. Les Olson, your technology partner. Smith's Food and Drug. Smith's now has grocery pickup and online delivery to save you time. Also sponsored by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 1-800-STATE-FARM. BYU Basketball is a production of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. Special thanks to BYU President Kevin Worthen, Vice President Matt Richardson, Athletic Director Tom Holmo, and General Manager of Corporate Sponsorships Casey Stoffer. BYU Basketball is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.